Hi everyone! Today we're going to look at Lesson 4.6, Triangle Congruence in Right Triangles. Our essential question is how do you determine if two right triangles are congruent? Let's start with the definitions and the theorems. We've all seen right triangles before. Remember, a right triangle is just a triangle that has one right angle. Most of the time, the right angles are going to be marked with a 90 degree marker like this. In a right triangle, the hypotenuse is the side that's opposite the right angle. An easy way to remember this is that opposite is like a cross from. So when we're talking about the hypotenuse, it's going to be a cross from the 90 degree angle. So if you go to the 90 degree angle box and you draw an arrow there, that arrow is going to point to your hypotenuse. The remaining two sides of the triangle are called the legs. The legs are the two sides that form the right angle. So you can see how this side here that I highlighted in blue, and then the other side that I'm also highlighting in blue, those two sides together form that 90 degree angle, and we call those the legs. The hypotenuse leg theorem tells us that if the hypotenuse and leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, then the triangles are congruent. I'd like you to mark this up in the diagram. Let's start by adding a 90 degree angle to each of these triangles. The hypotenuse leg theorem only works if you have right triangles. It does not work for any other triangle. This tells us if the hypotenuse and the leg of one right triangle are congruent to the hypotenuse and leg of another right triangle, the triangles are congruent. So in other words, we need to have a pair of congruent hypotenuses. I'd like you to mark those. Remember the hypotenuse is across from the 90. It's also the longest side. And then I also need a pair of legs. Now there are two legs. We only need one pair of those legs to be congruent. I'm going to pick the shorter leg and I'm going to mark them the same and then I'm going to label them as legs. And now you can see that I have the hypotenuse of one triangle congruent to the hypotenuse of the other and the leg of one triangle congruent to the leg of another. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by HL. It's very important to remember though that the hypotenuse leg theorem only works for right triangles. If this wasn't a right triangle, we would have two sides and a non-included angle. We would have an SSA, and we've talked about that many times, how side-side angle does not work. It does work, however, when you have right triangles. So make sure first that you know both triangles are right triangles, and they have to either tell you they're right triangles, or it has to have the 90 degree angle box marked. Just because it looks like a 90 degree angle doesn't mean it is a 90 degree angle. You have to know for sure. So double check before you use HL that you have a right triangle and that we have the hypotenuses matching and the legs matching. If that wasn't the case, we'd just have two sides and a non-included angle and we'd have that SSA or ASS, which we know does not work. So now let's practice identifying if you can use HL to prove the triangles are congruent. The first thing you should check for is that you have a pair of right triangles. And in my first picture here, I do. I have a right angle here and a right angle there. Then we need to check for the hypotenuse and the leg. Remember that the hypotenuse is always the side that's across from the 90. So I'm gonna just mark those, H for hypotenuse. And you can see that those are indeed congruent because they're marked the same. Each has three tick marks by it. And then the other side that's marked with the two tick marks is a leg. So that right there tells me we have two right triangles with a pair of congruent hypotenuses and legs. Therefore, these two triangles are congruent by the hypotenuse leg theorem, which is HL for short. Let's check this middle set of triangles. Notice how the two intersecting lines there in the triangles do form a pair of vertical angles. So right away, I'm going to add that little marking there. This angle and this angle are congruent because they're vertical angles. And I do have right triangles, but you'll notice that I do not have a hypotenuse or a leg. 
all I have is three pairs of congruent angles. And that's not enough information to use HL or any of the other theorems we've talked about. So for your answer here in your notes, I'd like you to write down no. And you can also add that you do not have a hypotenuse or a leg. For our last pair of triangles, notice how we have one 90 degree angle mark, but because this is a straight line, we know that the other half must be 90 as well. So we can go ahead and add in that marking. And now just looking at the pictures, we can already see that we have a pair of congruent hypotenuses. The hypotenuse is that side across from the 90, which is those two sides with the one tick mark. Then these two triangles are touching one another. They're sharing a side. So this side right here, down the middle, you can mark that congruent. It's reflexive property there. And that is actually a leg. So that is an L in both of your triangles. Therefore, you have enough information now to say that these two triangles are congruent by HL. Here's a try now for you to try on your own. This time though, we're mixing it up and we're looking at all five ways to show that triangles are congruent. So HL is the new one we added here in lesson 4.6, but we can also show they're congruent by side, side, side and side, angle, side that we learned about back in lesson 4.4 and angle side angle and angle angle side that we learned about in lesson 4.5. Let's go over the first couple here together and then I'll have you do the last few on your own. Remember when we're checking for congruent triangles, there's often extra things we can mark in. Like if they share a side, for example, in this first two set of triangles, they share a side so I can mark that in there. And now I can see that I have two angles and I have a side. Anytime you have two angles in a side, it's guaranteed to work because both ASA and AAS are valid congruent statements. This one here is going to be angle, angle, side because that side there is not between the two marked angles. Our next picture here, we have two right angles, so potentially we have HL. We also have a shared side that I can mark here. And that marked side there is the H in both the triangles. It's crossed from the 90. And then the remaining side there that's marked is a leg. So here we have enough information to say that the triangles are congruent by HL. Our third pair of triangles here, for the one on the left, it appears to follow the pattern of side, angle, side, because we have two sides and the angle that's in the middle of those two sides. But notice that the triangle on the right has angle, side, side. The angle's in the wrong spot. It's not between the two sides. And this isn't a right triangle either, so I can't use HL. Therefore, because the second triangle doesn't follow our pattern, we would say not enough information. Why don't you go ahead and try the last four here on your own. Please pause the video now and give it a try. When you hit play again, I'll have the solutions posted. Please pause now. Here are your answers. This one here has a shared side down the middle. And if you add markings to that, you can see that there are three sides of one triangle congruent to three sides of another, which is SSS. This one, you should have marked in the pair of vertical angles. And after marking in a pair of vertical angles, we now have two angles and a non-included side. Notice how that side is not between the two angles. If it was, it would have to be this side right here. It's a different side. Therefore, we're congruent by angle, angle, side. This one, has a 90 degree angle here, but that's also vertical with the other triangle. 
And we know vertical angles are congruent, therefore that's also 90 degrees. And then you can see that there's both a hypotenuse and leg. So therefore we're congruent by HL. And this last set of triangles here has three pairs of congruent sides, so it's another one that's congruent by side, side, side. In example two, let's state what information is needed to prove if the triangles are congruent by HL. Be aware too that sometimes when you're doing this, there may be more than one possible answer. In our first set of triangles, you can see that we have a 90 degree angle, but we know this other angle across from it's 90 because it's a vertical angle pair. Then it gives us the hypotenuses. Those are the ones that are marked with the three tick marks. So we just need to have a pair of legs. Now, since each triangle has a pair of legs or two pairs of legs, there's two possible answers. We could do those two that I just marked with the one tick mark. And I'm gonna name those XN and LN. That would be one possible answer. Or it would also be okay if I chose the longer leg on both the triangles, like WN congruent to MN. Either of those would work. They give us a pair of hypotenuses and a pair of legs. The next set of triangles here also has the hypotenuses marked, so we need to have the legs. You can pick either of the legs. Um, say we pick, I don't know, the shorter leg again. So that would be this one and this one that I just marked with the one tick mark. So one option would be side DB congruent to side TV. Or you could also do the longer of the legs. Let's call it CB and UV. And you'll notice how when I'm naming these, I'm going in the same order each time. DB, see how B is the 90 degree angle? So I want to go that same direction on my other triangle, which is TV. And if I call the longer leg CB, that is the angle to the 90. So the longer side over here would have to be UV, because V is my 90 again. Then here for our final pair of triangles, you do have a pair of right angles already because we know that since that's making a line, both halves of the line have to total 180. And if that half is 90, the other half has to be 90 as well since 90 and 90 makes 180. Then you can also mark in the overlapping side here, which is a pair of legs in both. So that means we need the hypotenuse. Here there's only one possible answer because each triangle only has one hypotenuse. So that would be this side that I just marked with two tick marks and that side that I marked with two tick marks as well. So that would be like HQ congruent to RQ. That would give us the H's. We already have the L's in the shared side and now we have HL. The last thing we're going to look at in this lesson is a couple proofs that involve right triangles. As always, when we start a proof, the first thing we're going to do is copy down the given. Here, we're given that B is the midpoint of CD, and AB is congruent to ED, as marked in the diagram, and C and D are right angles, as marked in the diagram. I'm just gonna add a label here quick that B is my midpoint of CD, and that's gonna help me to get another side. Let's start though by just creating our proof. So there I made my T-chart, and now I'm just gonna copy down the given as my first statement. So there I copy down all of the statements, and then my reason for that first line is because it's given. Now let's see what else we know. Now, chances are with a proof like this, we are gonna be using HL most likely, but before I can use HL, I'm going to need to establish the fact that we have right triangles because HL can only be used if there's two right triangles. Now, just kind of planning out our proof, you can see that we already have the pair of congruent hypotenuses. That was part of the given where AB was congruent to EB. And then since B is the midpoint of CD, 
The next marking that I'm going to be able to add to my picture is that these two halves are equal. CD is congruent to DB because that's the definition of a midpoint. So that's going to be our L. But before I can use HL, I do need to establish that my triangles are right triangles. So for my next step, I'm just going to say that triangle ABC and triangle EBD are right triangles. And our reason for that is by definition of right triangle. Because each triangle has a right angle, we know by definition that the two triangles are right triangles because they each have one right angle, angle C and angle D. Now that we've established that, let's go back to the sides being congruent. We know again that CB is congruent to DB because it told us in the given that B is the midpoint of CD. So that again is by definition of midpoint. And now we have enough information here to show the triangles are congruent. We have the hypotenuse as part of the given. We just showed that a pair of legs are congruent with CB congruent to DB. So now we can end our proof with triangle ABC is congruent to triangle EBD. And my reason is the HL theorem, which is HL for short. So the only little extra piece you're gonna need to add if you're using HL in a proof is that the triangles are right triangles. And I think the best place to put that is just right after the given. I know your homework is set up that way too, where we start with the given, then we establish that you have two right triangles, and then you go on with the other parts of your proof, ending with what we were asked to prove, triangle ABC congruent to triangle EBD by HL. Here's one more problem for you to try. If you'd like to pause the video and try this on your own, you can pause right now. If you'd like another explanation of this proof, I will just walk us through it here. All right, so I'm just setting up my um, table here with statements on the left and reasons on the right. Then, as always, the first step is to write down the given. So there, I just copied that down, and my reason is because it's given. So we're given that PQ is congruent to RS, as marked in the diagram. Angle Q and angle S are both right angles, as also marked in the diagram. Remember, though, that before I use HL, which is most likely going to be my plan, let's plan this out actually quick. The two sides that we know are congruent are both legs, so we have the L. And then there's a shared side in the middle, which is the H. So we will be able to use HL here, but before I use HL, I need to establish that I have two right triangles. So for step two of my proof, I'm gonna say that triangle PQR and triangle RSP are right triangles. And again, the reason for that is by definition of right triangles. So now we've shown that we have two right triangles. Let's go back to that shared side there that I marked in green. We know that side PR is congruent to side PR because it's a shared side. Sides are always congruent to themselves. And that's just the reflexive property again. So now we have an H, we have the L as part of the given. So we can end our proof with what we were asked to prove here, that triangle PQR is congruent to triangle RSP by hypotenuse leg theorem, which is HL for short. This concludes lesson 4.6 on triangle congruence in right triangles. 
Remember, the HL theorem can only be used for right triangles. So before you start marking things as H's and L's, make sure that you for sure know that both triangles are right triangles. Thanks for watching, and good luck as you try some problems on your own. Bye.